Hello everyone, welcome to the uh, 63rd episode of the Ruins of Warsaw um, and welcome back after our a bit longer Christmas break. Uh, I'm Alexandra and I'm the storyteller. Hi, um, I'm the and, well, and I'm playing Yanina of Klan Bruha. Hi, my name is Faye and I'm playing Beatrice Bozniak of Klan Alkavian. And as always, we have partners helping us with tech and managing the chat, uh, for which we are very grateful. Thank you all so much for joining us um, after unexpectedly a bit longer break. Unfortunately, um, we needed to move this episode a week from when it was going to be, uh, but we are now ready to restart the story and hopefully we'll be able to continue with regular schedule from now on. We try to, but life tends to have other ideas many, many times. Um, but we are here tonight and let's start with um, a recap of what happened previously, especially since it has been a long break. So, uh, last time, after a meeting with her primogen, during which she learned to step out of her body and visit places in this way, Bea returned to Elysium, where she met with another Malkavian, Lahela, with whom she spoke uh, about the primogen, about what she just learned, and also confided in Rahela uh, about Bea's sire, Felicia, being known to have gone to the Sabbath Haven, whether for good or on the way somewhere, remaining unclear to which Rahela suggested that Bea could check with what she just learned, but remembering warnings about the dangers that come with disability, uh, Bea was maybe not completely rejecting the idea, uh, but cautious. Um, she then was summoned to speak to the Prince and the Primogen Council to report on the progress of her task to use Arek, a Sabbath gangrel who was captured, um, to find an opportunity to strike at Sabbath. Now, Arek used to be Bea's coterie mate and betrayed them um, several years ago before Bea met um, Yanina and Mara. And um, Bea thought that perhaps she can use first her ability to gain his trust and secondly the fact that uh, Zimishi, Lady Leocadia, seems to want Arek return and Bea promised her to return him uh, to Camarilla's advantage. Um, Bea admitted that she needed a supervisor and asked for help with that and a volunteer was found, Mr. Cernowski, a Tremir, uh, who was accepted uh, as the one to lead on this task and supervise Bea. Uh, Bea was offered his vita with which she, with not much choice, accepted. Uh, and Mr. Cernowski asked her to give all her notes so far on this matter to his child, Joachim, and also gave her a key to room where Arek is being held so that she can continue visiting him to build tr his trust in her um, so that it can be exploited. Bea indeed followed the instructions, handed over her notes and went to see Arek where reaching into his confused and distressed, tortured mind, she managed to get some positive feelings from him towards her and start building some sort of connection, but at a quite high mental and emotional cost to herself. Um, meanwhile, Yanina was desperate to avoid Bea throughout the night, fearing a likely conversation about what happened with Nastia. So she left Hotel Bristol 
to feed and while out she was attacked by a group of young Sabbat vampires. Uh, she had enough sense to run away and wasn't much hurt. Um, and when she arrived at the hospital where her lab is, um, she intended to just connect, uh, collect some Vita to bring back for Zoya, an injured Bruja. Um, but had a conversation with Mr. Pototsky, who used to be a ghoul of now deceased Bruja Primogen, um, and whom Yanina offered her Vita, which he intends to accept but hasn't had yet. And he told her off for being reckless, for not taking care of herself, for not taking care of her injuries, giving her a bit of a talk on already having one goal and offering to help Mr. Pototsky. She needs to make sure she's around and in good condition and she needs to be careful. Um, to which Yanina eventually listened and took some of the blood offered. Uh, well, some of the blood stored there that was always there that she just refused to drink herself, wanting to keep it for others, and actually uh, healed herself of very old, aggravated injuries. Um, she visited her ghoul Hannah and um, also gave her her own Vita so that Hannah could heal faster. Um, and then talked with Hannah uh, about their respective lives back when Yanina was immortal and she could see that Hannah was in awe of Yanina, admiring her for basically everything she heard about. After which Yanina returned to Hotel Bristol, uh, went to see Zoya to offer her blood that she brought and Zoya, who previously disliked Yanina quite a lot for uh, Yanina's earlier deeds that led to death of some of the anarchs, um, Zoya seemed to have maybe not quite warmed up to Yanina, but wasn't quite so standoffish and unfriendly, and even offered to show Yanina how to make dynamite if Yanina was so inclined. Um, after which, not looking for Bea, still hoping to continue to avoid her, Yanina went to hide in her room and stayed there, not looking to speak to her sister. And Bea was in her room, uh, where she was visited by Antoni, her partner, who came to check how everything went with the primogen, uh, was concerned about Bea working for Mr. Cernovsky um, and stayed with her, comforting her, and she fell asleep in his arms. And that is uh, where we finished last time, and we will pick up the following night. Uh, Bea, you are running through a ruined city. The air smells of ash and blood, and the smoke covers your ears. The sharp edges of broken stones hurt your naked feet as you run. You, you think you're looking for someone. You're not sure there's too much smoke around you. There's too much smoke in your head, and you're choking, choking from smoke that you inhale and from smoke that seeps through your tissues into your lungs. Um, the smell of blood goes stronger, making your head spin, uh, and your hands move on their own. You don't know what you're doing. Your whole body seems to move of its own accord. And then you see that there is blood dripping from your fingers. You don't know how it got there. It is staining your clothes, staining your naked feet as it drips. The grout trembles under your feet and the smoke around you grows darker and thicker. You run forward, you shout, 
uh, call out for your mother, you have an image of her pop into your head and you run ahead hoping you can find her, looking for her, straining your eyes to see through the thick smoke. Um, you hope that when you get to her, um, she will be there to protect you, blood will be gone, the ground will stop trembling, but it shakes and shakes and the stones cut through your feet as you try to keep going, but you fall down and you are alone, surrounded by dark smoke, trembling and suffocating, suffocating with the smoke that sips through your tissue and wraps itself around you and holds you and holds you. This is all your humanity with difficulty eight. Oh boy. Uh, grab some dice. I have three successes. So you open your eyes with this feeling of suffocating and you feel somebody's hands on your shoulders and you hear voice saying your name. Bea, Bea, what's going on? Bea, wake, wake up, wake up. What's happening? Are you all right? And you feel arms wrapping themselves around you and you recognize Antoni through the haze of smoke. Could I roll my self-control? Yes, but I would say the difficulty is eight in the moment as you're just yeah. um, waking up. Do your penalties affect my self-control rating? No. They don't? Okay. No, it's only for the combined rolls. That's fine. Um, difficulty eight? Yes. I have three successes. Then... the. Well, tell me, how does it feel? You don't respond to touch quite so violently, no. you can control it. I, so as I woke up um, with the sort of panic of the nightmare sort of fading slightly, there's, I think there's like a scream on my lips as I wake. Um, but as I sort of gain some lucidity and realise that Antonia is in front of me and that it's his arms and not the smoke, um, I sort of force the tension from my shoulders and relax them and it makes the touch feel less bad and as I sort of look at his face with the sort of hit the haze of sleep still sort of clouding mm. um uh my perception I I find myself sort of more comforted by his presence and I can um, bring myself to like, push through the discomfort and almost find that sense of comfort that I feel with him. Um, and I think in this moment of sort of hazy, not quite awakeness, I, I reach forwards, sort of almost not believing that he's there and press my fingers to his face um, as if I'm expecting him to just like dissipate into the smoke and just kind of murmur you're you're really here i'm, I'm you. here you're safe you're here with me and i end up speaking in this slightly choked whisper please don't let me go back to sleep I don't All right. to... i'll stay with you <sighs> And leaning into him, um, um, still sort of staring up at his face, to say, I'd rather be awake with you. All right, we'll stay awake. You still feel very tired. You realize you are awake earlier than you should be. Not massively, perhaps, but earlier. Uh, and when you look to his face, you, you see that he is looking to be very pale, more than normal, uh, very tired, uh, much more dead than he usually does. Uh, but he is, he keeps his eyes open and wraps his arm around you and just keeps saying, you're safe. Whatever it was, you're here. 
I'm with you. And I cup his face in my hands and so rest my forehead against his and take in his scent and the fact that he's here and try and force myself to stay awake because I, I don't want to go back to the nightmare. I just want to stay with him. And you are able to, with the three successes that you had, um, he also, um, you can see him that he, he struggles a bit, but he stays awake, um, sitting there with you, just not really saying much, just repeating, stay with me. Um, you are safe, you are awake. I'm not going to let you fall asleep again. And I guess sort of as I start to feel more awake, mm -hmm. I guess sort of towards the time I would normally wake up, I will press a kiss to his lips and say, thank you. I'm sorry about that. Of course. It's, um, it's nothing. Don't worry about it. Are you feeling any better? Yes, just just a bit tired, but it'll pass. Apologies, I get nightmares, and sometimes they linger like unwelcome ghosts. Well, if they do, let me know. Well, apparently I did. <laughs> I say, looking a little bit embarrassed. <laughs> Don't worry about it. And he leans down to kiss you. Meanwhile, Yanina, you wake up um, in your room. Um, occupying one of the two beds here. You see the room now has been cleaned up uh, more than it was before you trashed it, likely. Some furniture is still slightly damaged. There are parts of wood that chipped off when you threw it or kicked it. Uh, but you are there on your own. Okay. Um gonna slowly sit up and just stare into the distance for a moment, trying to think through that I what I want to do tonight. If I have any tasks or things that I promise that I'll do. And after a moment of thinking I get up and go towards the window and stare into the street as usual for a bit, just to calm myself a bit. You see it is snowing slightly, not a very heavy snow. Um, there are um, some people in the streets, there is a horse drawn carriage going past as it often does on the street. Um, there are it's a group of young um, kids, maybe around 12, running around, uh, throwing snow at each other and laughing, jumping on the ruins. Um, you see um, two women watching them from the distance clearly uh, the mothers of some um, fussing, running uh, towards one boy who tried to climb on a higher standing wall of a ruined building and slipped down and fell into a snow on the street, uh, but seems to be fine and gets up. Uh, and the whole group eventually starts moving off. I smile to myself and just sigh a bit and go out of my room and probably 
I guess what are my plans? You don't have specific plans as such. You don't have anything that you have mm -hmm. to do. Um, you, uh, well, you could speak to Bea unless you're still avoiding her. <laughs> you um, wanted to at some point check in on Dominic again. You are, I think, feeling a bit hungry. Okay. Yeah, in that case, I, I think I will. Since I know that Bea is dating right now, <laughs> so I think I will not intrude on her right now, and I will wait to see her in the Elysium later. Then I will go feed myself in the meantime. Okay. Um, so you head out from Hotel Bristol, hoping to feed. Um, and are you just looking for a random person to yes. get from? I usually am also like find someone who's alone and sneak up on them. <laughs> well, uh, in that case, roll your wits and alertness. Okay. Uh, difficulty seven. Oh, <laughs> no. Uh, no success. At least it's not a botch. <laughs> right. So you just can't seem to find anybody. Maybe it is too early and there are just too many people around. So whenever you think like this is someone who would be uh, a good person, you see you go into one of the smaller streets. There is someone who steps out from around the corner. Uh, it's just too crowded. Maybe you need to try again later. Okay, in that case, I think I still uh, want to stay outside for a bit. So I think I'm going to just walk some in the vicinity, but I'm not actively hunting anymore. I'm just walking and thinking about what I want to do with my day. Is there anything in particular on your mind? Well, I think I do want to see Dominic. If I if I get a chance, I want to speak to Bea. And maybe with Daniel if I meet him. Because do you he, think about Nastia? I think I do, but more on, I try to push these things, thoughts away and just concentrate on things that are present and that I can get done right now and not about the future. And you walk around in the falling snow thinking about what to do with this night. Bear. Um, you stop having to struggle to stay awake. You see, Antoni is still looking like he's forcing himself to be up. Uh, but he is doing a good job of that and he's just staying with you. I think I look at him with a sort of soft smile and will say to him gently, I'm going to be all right now if you need to go back to sleep. He see that there's a temptation, but then he looks at his watch. <laughs> uh, well, he has an instinct to look at his hands and he realizes it's not quite there. And he reaches uh, towards the pocket of his jacket that he took off and put on the chair. Mm -hmm. uh, before you went to sleep, looks at the time shakes his head. I think there isn't that much time left anyway. I'll be all right. I lean forward and kiss his forehead. <laughs> Is this... Do you have to suffer like this often? It comes and goes. Um, 
some nights are worse than others. I think a couple of times it's been so bad that I couldn't quite work out what was the nightmare and what was really here. But it's that's very infrequent. Um, mostly it's fine. <laughs> Apologies. Can it be helped somehow? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I think it's, if I've worn myself out, it's more likely to happen. Um, and unfortunately, just things are quite busy at the moment, so. They it's, are, but. Yes. I know you want to do the things you agreed to do, but if at any point you feel this is not safe and you want out, let me know. I smile at him again. Thank you. Of course. I give him another kiss. <sighs> and stroke his hair. Um, I'm not entirely trying to convince him to go back to sleep subtly, but maybe a little bit. <laughs> um, maybe a little bit. He does sort of lean his head into you and doesn't quite fall asleep, but like almost drifts off. So uh, gently stroking his hair. <laughs> quite soon, you realize that he stops feeling so sleepy as well. Uh, and looks around uh, much more alert and awake. I press a kiss into his hair. Feeling a bit better now? Yes, yes, it seems that. Well, it's time to get back to work, I suppose. Of course. <sighs> And I sort of roll my shoulders and stretch. Um, um, he puts a hand on your shoulder and looks at you carefully. Will you be all right tonight? Yes. Yes, I'll be all right. Just need to work out my priorities. I say, looking around for my journal um, and uh, sort of grabbing it quickly and glancing at my notes and immediately getting that sinking sensation when I suddenly remember what happened yesterday and uh, I'll be fine. If at any point something goes wrong, let me know. Thank you. I reach up to kiss him again. He kisses you. And clearly it's not in a hurry to leave. <laughs> I'm quite pleased with this. <laughs> um, uh, but eventually, after kissing you and pulling you closer, uh, with some effort, he does stand up and sit up on the bed and says, looking at his watch again, I will need to get ready. I have to meet with Mr. Sarnofsky. We're going to an airfield and need to be there on time. All right. Well, I hope things go smoothly. And they should. We're just picking up an elder of his clan and Whoever accompanies them, I suppose. Oh. Well. Um, Shouldn't I, be any trouble. Mm? Can I activate Eyes of Chaos as he says this? Um, I want to make sure that he's going to be safe. You can. Roll your perception in a cold with difficulty eight. Perception. And your penalty applies. And my penalties. <laughs> um, perception. 
cult penalty. Sorry. Was there was there anything else in there? It was perception, occult, penalties. That yes, was it. That's okay. it. Perception and occult. Oh my god. <laughs> I go away from that difficulty. I have eight. no idea what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> oh my god. I'm throwing dice everywhere. Um two successes. Two successes. So you're looking at Antoni specifically. Yes. In that. And you do see um shadows and blood wrapped in themselves around him, circling around him, not touching him at the moment. Um, and you get the sense of um, there being some danger, always lurking, always looking, always observing. But you also, that, that's about it. You don't get anything more Nothing imminent. immediate. I sort of tilt my head slightly as I'm looking at him, my eyes slightly looking almost past him as this is happening, and then come back to, I think it should go smoothly tonight. You're... You're always in so much danger. He looks a bit concerned at you. Sorry. Uh, well, I suppose it comes with the title. I suppose. Uh, apologies. Um... Hey, it's all right to worry. I worry about you. Well, I suppose at least we can share that the burden of worrying about each other. <laughs> I suppose. And you, you see that he is glancing to the time and then looks mm -hmm. to you. Okay, but I hate to ask you this, but I have to start getting ready soon. And would you be able, like we discussed, to keep an eye on Yanina? I'll find her. See if she's likely to do anything reckless. I would like to keep her safe, but I don't know what she's thinking. I don't know what to expect. I'll see what I can find out. Thank you for the reminder. Of course, I just... I don't like relying I don't like putting this on you. I know you are close, but because you are close, I think you she's, will care to do this. She's like a sister to me, and I don't want anything to happen to her either. Then so you're not putting that, anything on me. <laughs> then we need to make sure she doesn't do anything that would put her in danger. Yes. I'm going to have to get going, I'm afraid. Yes. I, and so I, I lean forward and sort of, uh, if he's still wearing a tie, then I'll sort of straighten it. Or, um. he, he looks at it, kind of smiles, and then looks to the mirror <laughs> and straightens it. Uh, and you get a sense he's going to go and change it anyway. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, he kisses you once again before leaving. Be safe tonight. You too. And sort of as I lean up to kiss him. Um, given that I'm still probably rumpled from sleep and thrashing mm -hmm. around in my sleep, is the scar on my chest at all visible? You're gonna roll if he notices anything. <laughs> Find out. <laughs> um, yeah. So as you are coming close to him, uh, he, you see his eyes wander towards uh, the wound and the writing in your chest. Which I've 
pretty much almost forgotten about, even though there's sort of that pain there, it's just kind of normal. Well, perception and alertness, you. Perception and alertness with penalty. Um, difficulty uh, six. Yes. One success. So you see him not like noticing and looking. And, I and then glance. he kind of looks to you, are you hurt? I sort of glance down because it takes me a little bit by surprise as well. Oh. Yes. Yes, it seems I am. I need to go feed. Um. <sighs> Scatterbrained. Apologies. He looks to you kind of... You, you get a sense he wants to stay longer and discuss this, but he needs to go. Mm. Uh, and he just says, right, well, um, take care of yourself. Well, I'll check on you later. You're always welcome here. I'll see you soon. And he gives you one last kiss and leaves. And once I close the door, I end up turning to the mirror and pulling the shirt aside to see the word promise still carved into my chest. And it's, as I'm looking at it, there's sort of this echoed memory of a hand around my neck and something carving my skin. Um, and a feeling of responsibility and hopelessness, but I don't remember the situation outside of that. Um, and I think about the fact that I need to heal it, and there's a part of me that almost feels like I need it because I need it to remember that pain, I need it to remember the 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 driving emotions that came with it, but I, because I can't remember the situation, it, I sort of grip my teeth and I sigh and I spend a point of blood and heal it. All right then. Uh, and I suddenly feel lighter than I have done in some time. And I wonder how long I've been wandering around with that. <laughs> but you don't remember. Nope. Meanwhile, Yanina, uh, you are wandering around Warsaw. How long do you do this? Is it like? Like an hour, two hours. Hour, two hours. So that's fairly long. I think would I be able to walk to Ham? Yes. Yeah? Uh, yes, it would take you maybe 40 minutes to get there. I think I would like just, I didn't want to go there, but I think once I went far away from the hotel, I think I just instinctively went towards our haven. Mm. So after about 40 minutes, you get there. Uh, and you are outside the block of flats where your haven is. Okay. I think for a moment and look at the window if there's like light. There is light in the window. Okay. In that case, I will go upstairs and knock. Um, you hear a voice, uh, just a moment, and then... Uh, steps coming faster than you remember them going before. Uh, and you see uh, Hannah as she opens the door and she is standing um, without relying on her crutches. I smile as I see her. Good evening. Yanina, oh, come on in, come on in. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too. And I look at her. Look at her legs and smile. I'm Look better. 
still a bit wobbly, but I can walk on my own now. It really works how Mr. Pototsky said. I'm so happy. I'm so happy you can walk on your own. <sighs> Thank you. I, I don't know what would have happened with me if it wasn't for you. And I give her a smile, a genuine smile, but it's not like a happy smile, more like yeah, I'm glad I saved you, but now, now you're my ghoul. <laughs> yeah, how do you feel about that now? I'm still like torn because I'm. I know that she would be dead if I didn't save her, and I feel I'm conflicted, but at the same time, part of me. Is glad that she's here and that I have someone close to me again, especially after Nastya and what happened. I'm just I'm just happy that I have someone else than Bea. Another person that I feel I can trust. But at the same time I feel feel guilty because because I know that not all her feelings are genuine, but I feel better about at least having told her the truth about ghouls and everything. And I just, I just hope that I will be able to keep her safe. Um, and she leads you to the living room and uh, almost wants to start fussing and starts asking, can I offer you, oh, I, can you have tea or? I don't, I don't need it, but thank you. Keep it. It would be a waste for me. So just keep it for yourself. Myself. Well, I, I, I'll, I just, right. Okay. And she kind of sits down, but clearly feeling uneasy that she wanted to greet you with something as is traditional. Do you need anything? Do you have enough food or anything? I um, I don't want to worry you. I'll, I'll be all right. Don't, don't worry. No, you, you're not worrying me. I, I'm responsible for you and I want to make sure you have everything you need. Um... I'm running out of money. Okay. I... Do I have any money? <laughs> Do you <laughs> have any dots in the resources? Huh. I don't that should be so. under backgrounds. Do you have oh. resources written there? No. <laughs> well, <laughs> then except for some like small pocket okay. change, I don't think you already gave her some money previously. Okay. You're broke. Okay. In that case, I say I'll get I'll get you money. Your darling sister has money. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Um, time time to give her a visit. <laughs> so Hannah says, I, I don't know if it's not a problem. I can no, I can no, go look for some work now that I can walk and. No, I I think it would be better for you to like do the work at the hospital. I'll make sure to bring you money oh. tomorrow. All right, thank you. Thank you. Y Yagina says some things that she maybe needs to mark someone she, <laughs> she will feed on. <laughs> I can believe Yanina having that thought at this point. Um, but we'll come to that. Um, um, so, uh, well, thank you for coming to check in on me. I... Of course, I was just walking and suddenly I was here, so I... Well, it's good to see you. I, I've been thinking about, well, all, all you told me about your life and how if I could learn some of what you've learned that, well, I, I can't believe I could, but... Well, you can do anything. I believe in you, honey. Thank you. I've been trying to practice writing and she shows you uh, some paper where she clearly has been 
copying out of a book that she uh, found, um, like just practicing shapes. I smiled. I can't quite read all of it, but I thought I might practice my hand. But now I can walk. Maybe I can go to one of these classes that That's Mr. Potocki mentioned. That would be great. I want you to learn how to read and write. I never thought a, well, a girl like me would be learning such things, no one. Well. Well, you will. Your new life started now, so. It's, it's very incredible. You showed me the whole other way of being, the whole other world. I... Well, I hope we can make it as good as, as we can for you. I want you to be happy. I am. I, I, I'm really happy. How long can you stay? I, I, I can stay for a bit, like 30 minutes or so, before I want to get back to the hotel and meet with Belle. Can you tell me how, how to read those things? Of course. And I... When you start... Practicing with her. Helping her to learn to read and uh, to learn the letters that some she didn't know and just copied. Uh, and you spend some time with her doing that. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Bea. Yes. You're left not remembering how long you were walking with that strange injury of sorts. Yes. Um, I'm looking. I eventually sort of give up staring at myself, trying to get my memory to do what it's not naturally going to do unless I really push it and I'm too tired to really want to spend my time doing that. Um, so I just glance back at my to-do list. Um, and I'm looking over it and seeing that um, I've got a few things to do with Arik. I need to find you, Nina, at some point. Um, and, well, Mr. Sonofsky is going to be out, so I'm not going to be able to talk to him about that. So I guess I'll go glance past Elysium and see if Yanina's there or if anyone else is looking to speak to me. And if not, then I'll probably go hunt. Um, so you don't see Yanina there, mm -hmm. um, nor anyone who would immediately come up to you. You see Vahela smiling at you and nodding her head, and she's sitting there with Elisa. Um, you see Nina is there. Um, you see, um, yeah, no one else. You see some of the Toriadors. You see Mihai is back in there. Okay. Uh, sitting at his seat right now, but no one immediately coming up to speak to you. Okay. As I see Elisa, there's something in the back of my head which is kind of niggling at me. Um, um, and I end up sort of glancing back through my journal about what I have written about her. I believe I've got some notes about how She's not enthused about the fact her clan is... Yes, with Mr. Cernowski, she was not. And Rahel uh, told you a little bit about that. Okay, in which case, I am going to come up and approach both her and mm -hmm. Rahela um, and greet them both um, with a smile. Uh, Rahela smiles at you. Bea, it's good, good to see you. you. Uh -huh. And Elisa, as well as you as well, uh, but you know her much less, so mm -hmm. she just sort of knows her head. 
Good evening. Um, I was wondering, I say, looking to Lisa, could I speak to you in private? Um, yes, of course. I'll, sort, I'll turn to Rahela and say you're welcome to come as well, but if you want. Um, you see them exchange glances uh, and then Elisa sort of nods and Rahela says, well, uh, I'll come along then if, uh, if you don't mind. I smile at both of them and then head to some of the back offices, I guess, and yeah. find a quieter space. And once we're in a room, I will turn to Elisa and say, um, I was speaking with Mr. Bielecki earlier and um, it sounds as though Mr. Stronowski has gone to go pick up an elder of your clan. I just wanted to give you a heads up. Roll perception and empathy. Okay. Would hidden pain come into this for Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it might. <laughs> that wasn't right. Oh, actually, it is relevant. Wonderful. I love that for me. Difficulty six? Six. Okay. Uh, one gets rid of the seven. Um, one, two, three, five. Five successes. Okay, in that case, she's controlling it pretty well. Uh, but you see this hint of not quite surprise as such, but this sort of confirmation of something you have been expecting mm -hmm. and a bit of despair sinking in. Okay. And she just nods her head. Thank you for telling me. I appreciate it. Mm. Do, do you know anything more? Um, just that there was due to be an elder and whoever else he brings along. Sorry, they Naturally. bring along. <laughs> uh, I don't know too much more, I'm afraid, but I thought you should know. Thank you. You see the hell I just squeezing Elisa's hand tighter and Elisa squeezing it back. And Rahela leans into her, just says, You'll be all right, we'll make it so that you will be all right. And Lisa knows her head and says, and says, I will be all right. But ah, thank you. If there's anything I can do to help, just let me know. She I smiles don't... and just shakes her head. No, I'm afraid. That's fine. I just appreciate knowing. Better than it being a surprise. Okay. It is indeed. Do you know what time they might be here? I'm not sure. <clears throat> I presume some point tonight. I'm not entirely certain when. She glances to you, glances to Rahela. I'll leave you both to it. Um, take care. Rahela just nods to you and just kind of mutters, thank you. And uh, but I'll... then turns to Elisa who nods to you. I will leave them reasonably yeah. quickly just to give them some space um, and head back out. You head back out. Um, to where are you heading? Um, since I can't see you, Nina, um, I guess I will head out to hunt. Um, All right, yes, you said you wanted to head out to hunt. Yeah, that's fine. So I start heading out of the hotel. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Yanina, you spend a bit over half an hour with Hannah, helping her, and she's completely focused on everything you're saying and trying to remember uh, as she's writing. 
and you see that she struggles with the movements and it is very much like child's writing still but she is learning and she is um picking it up fairly quickly i smile and encourage her and after a while i just get up and excuse myself that i have to head back of course and thank you Thank you for keeping our flat in good condition. Well, I can give it a proper clean one time. Well, fully recovered. Don't worry about it. Okay, I think I will visit you in a, either tomorrow or the next day. I'll look Maybe forward to it. And she hugs you back. See you I soon. Kiss her on the cheek and leave. And you leave. And what do you intend to do now, now that you've left? I think I will be heading back to the hotel, but I will try to hunt again. All right then. Well, roll your uh, wits and alertness with difficulty eight this time. Okay. Okay, I, well, I have four successes. All right. Three nines and one eight. And no, four successes. Um, you are in a um, less busy area and it is a bit later. Um, so as you're wondering the district where your haven is, uh, vaguely towards Poniatowski Bridge, but um, doing a bit of a slum between buildings, trying to find somebody. Um, you did see um, a very well-built man, uh, clearly a uh, worker in workers' clothing, carrying uh, a case with some tools, uh, walking at a fairly relaxed pace, whistling to himself a bit. Uh, stopping to look at the snow, then keeps going. Okay, well, is he walking towards me or in another direction? Uh, he's looking towards you. Okay, then I will wait for him to pass me and then I will turn around and jump on him from behind. All right, just to <laughs> overpower him. Yeah. <laughs> um, just for the sake of everything being by the book, roll your strength, brawl and potence. Difficulty six. Okay. Uh, three successes, three sixes, and then one that didn't count. Um, without an issue. Um, you overpower him, keep him in place, and bite into his neck. Mm -hmm. How much blood do you have right now? Six. Out Six. of? Um, Twelve, I think. Well, yes, Twelve. In which case, I would mm -hmm. like you to roll for self-control. Um, do you spend willpower? No. Difficulty no. will be eight. I enjoy the living intensely. All right, then. Um, no. <laughs> I had success, but I also had one, so... Mm -hmm. So you don't have um, mm -hmm. a single success, and you start drinking. Mm -hmm. And drinking and drinking, and you yum, lose yum. yourself in the taste of Vita. Meanwhile, Bea, you are heading out to hunt. Blissfully unaware. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep, I'm just... I'm sticking not too near to the hotel, but not going miles away either. Um, and you're also just looking for someone wandering the streets that you can yes. attack there. Yep. <laughs> so, roll your wit and alertness with difficulty seven. Oversized 
leech. Um, wits and alertness plus penalty. I'm trying to remember. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping on it <laughs> for now. <laughs> um, I have a 10 and a 9. All right, then. Um, in which case, you are um, wandering the streets, wandering further away from the hotel, um, and you see uh, a woman uh, in a long uh, coat uh, walking carefully on a slippery, narrow street, holding on to the side of a building a little bit. Um, it's not super slippery here. She's a bit in front of you, uh, but she's clearly being very careful. Okay. Um, do I feel reasonably confident on this sort of ground? Like you, you yes, said, it's not massively do. slippery. No, no, you're fine to walk up to okay. her. I will um, come up to her and just sort of say, we, <laughs> do you want an arm? <laughs> Would that be any easier? <laughs> Well, your charisma and yeah. uh, persuasion. Okay. Difficulty six. Okay. Does friendly face come into this? Yes, it does. Okay. I think it gives you extra dice or lowers difficulty. I have. No, no it lowers the difficulty. Sorry. So okay. It would actually be difficulty five. Wonderful. Um, does polite come into this? <laughs> I could do, yeah. Okay. Um. Well, after the one, okay, then that leaves me with two successes. <laughs> um. Still, that's enough. She doesn't suspect anything. She takes your arm. Thank you. I, I injured my leg not long ago. I'm still recovering. Um. And I'll continue sort of making polite conversation mm -hmm. with her as I get her off the slightly slippery bit mm -hmm. towards a, a more stable patch of ground. Mm -hmm. Um. And as once she's on that more stable ground, I'd like to like maybe sort of lean in as though I've mm -hmm. sort of like leaned forward a mm -hmm. bit too far yeah. and try and take that opportunity to bite. <laughs> of course, you succeeded on a roll to convince her to trust you. So you manage to maneuver yourself into that. And you also drink. How much blood do you have? Eight. You should be fine. Eight, <laughs> yes. Then I'm how, good. <laughs> how much do you drink? In fact, so. she said that she's recently injured her leg. Um, did I get like catch a glimpse of it? Did it look really bad, or was it just kind of like a small limp? Um, um, did I tell? Roll your perception and medicine. <laughs> so my perception. Difficulty <laughs> seven. Cool. Um, yeah, I have two nines, so. Slide, but you don't feel it was like a serious injury. It wasn't like or... operation levels. No, no nothing yeah. like that. Just okay. or uh, if it was like a, a long time, it would have been a long time ago. She okay. she's mostly fine. Okay, in which case I'll take two. All right, then you drink uh, what you need, and do you just leave her there? Um. Yes, I think so. Like maybe propped against. Uh, a wall. Um, I do take just a moment to make sure that her coat's sort of closed around her. Um, and she's groaning and slowly coming to. And if I am able to sort of activate unseen passage. Um, you then... are able to do that. And you disappear. Yes. Um, and leave. <laughs> and leave. And you return to Hotel Bristol. And as I'm heading back, I find myself pondering over the sort of care that went into thinking about her there and thinking that that's mm -hmm. not always how I've worked. And maybe there's been times where I've been more callous um, and I'm sort of wondering if it's just that I'm just being cautious because, I mean, I don't want to cause a scene or anything, but but I'm not entirely sure whether that's it or not. Um, but it is something I sort of think on as I'm heading back. 
All right, and you head back with those thoughts on um, your attitude towards the people you feed from. Mm. Uh, speaking of people you feed <laughs> from, <laughs> Yanina, or maybe Dolores, you didn't quite botch the roll. Do you want to spend a point of willpower to roll again? To pull yourself yes. away? Yes, I will. I will. Um, then roll. Difficulty will be nine on this. Oh. Oh, no successes. No successes. In which case you... You are drinking, you are lost in pleasure. You, the moment yes, you started course. drinking, you realize that how much you've been missing it. And there is this brief thought somewhere through that you could stop and it just disappears in this overwhelming sensation. And you drink and drink and drink. Yeah, and then, you come to, and when there's nothing more to drink, you feel satisfied. And then you open your eyes and you see pale, almost turning blue face of this man you're holding in your arms. And the tools he's been carrying, his box has fell to the ground and they spilled over onto the snow. Um, and he's, he's better built than you, a bigger figure, bigger person, but you're holding him without an issue in your inhumanly strong arms. And as you look and realize that you've killed a person again, please roll your conscience. Mm. Difficulty is eight. I have two successes to eight. Then you realize that you... Again, like several times before you just went for it and thinking, and now this man is dead because of you. I slowly put him on the ground and I just shake my hand and look around. If there's anyone. There's no one around at the moment. I kneel to him and I lick the wound. Um, yeah, you can make the wound go away. And then I start to get up and I want to leave, but then I realize that I already killed him, so I'm going to check his pockets if he has any money. <laughs> Do you really feeling absolutely guilty because you passed your conscience roll? I do, because what he's going to do with the money? They are, someone else is going to take them and I could give them to Hannah. And she's priority. So you do take his money if he has any, I don't know, but I would definitely like to look. And I would ask you for another conscience roll for mm. that. Uh, Difficulty eight. Okay, I have two successes again. So you take his money. And you realize it's not taking of the money in itself that is a problem here. It's what you've become. Someone who murders and steals. Well, I feel awful, but no, there is nothing I can do for him. There is not. You've done what you could have done, which was to kill him. I try to just leave, leave the scene, and I'm trying not to cry as I walk fast, fastly towards the hotel. Roll your self-control. Difficulty eight. Oh, it's a botch. 
you start sobbing somewhere on the bridge as you start climbing the steps to the bridge you start sobbing bloody tears i try to like hide my face in my arm in my hand as i walk and avoid any people that i see because i don't want anyone to come close and see the bloody tears and as i walk closer to the hotel i probably stand somewhere in the shadowy area and wipe my face. As you're doing that, please roll your perception and awareness with difficulty eight. Do you have awareness? Uh, no. Then roll your perception with difficulty eight. Okay. Uh, no success. Listen. Nothing happens. You wipe your tears. Okay, and after I think I did a decent job, I walk the hotel through the main entrance like usual. All right. Meanwhile, Bea, you would have returned a bit earlier. Okay. Um, I guess I probably sort of headed back to to our rooms checked you nina found she wasn't there no uh she was not there so i guess i'm sort of wondering where she might be and i'm a little bit stressed because i'm not entirely sure um and i was looking back through my notes and i didn't note anything down yesterday because i didn't really see her so i'm starting to be a bit worried um um I think while I'm sort of standing in the corridor because I'm so worried that she might have gone off and done something reckless, I I sort of focus on Yanina and activate um, Eyes of Chaos again because I just need to know that she's not gone and done something to do with Nastya. <laughs> well, why don't you roll your perception in a cult? With yeah. Difficulty eight. Absolutely. Let's go. Um, perception and a cult. Difficulty eight. An eight or a three? That is a three. Okay. Mm. All right. I don't think the 10 is going to bounce there. So that's one success. <laughs> One success. So you get a sense of Vita in your mouth and the pleasure, overwhelming pleasure as you're drinking. And you get this profound sense of guilt and disgust and despair briefly shake you as your mouth still tastes of Vita and then it's gone. Well, now I'm concerned for a different reason. Um, I guess I sort of end up sort of going to the top of the stairs in the lobby um, and kind of glancing out into the night, seeing if I can spot her. Um, and I'm wondering if I should head out and try look for her, but I don't know where to go. Um, and as you're standing there, you see uh, Cornelia coming in, uh, wearing a light grey coat. And she looks around and glances towards you. I try and, and give her a smoother you. smile. <laughs> and she says, coming up the stairs. Good evening. Good evening, Ms. Wojniak. How are you? All right, given the circumstances. What about yourself? All right, given the circumstances, she says, with a smile that's more of a grimace, really. I think we're mirroring the same expression, to be honest. I was hoping to find you the um, Mr. Lubomirsky would like to speak with you. Oh, um, any particular time or? Um, he 
He said if you can stop by at some point this night, he will be at his office. All right. I'll, I'll do that then. And I write it down in my journal. Uh, Miss Ochevska should be somewhere downstairs to take you to the right place. That's good. Thank you. I will do that. Uh, and I will write it down. How have things been? And I sort of glance around a little bit. Um, she glances around. I, well, as could be expected, I suppose. I, I've been focused on helping Kim so far. Of course. How have things been for you? Busy. Uh, and I sort of find myself thinking, uh, um, I think I then turn to her and with a very, well, an attempt at a very controlled smile, mm -hmm. we'll sort of say, um, I'm going to be working more closely with Mr. Sanovsky now. She nods her head. Well, I'm afraid I will not be able to help you much at the moment. I understand. But thank you. Take care of yourself, Miss Vozniak. I'll try. And I sort I'd sort of stopped myself, not quite mid sentence, mm -hmm. but when I'd said I'm working more closely with Mr. Sonovsky now, in my head there was sort of now that Mr. Lubomirsky isn't the primogen. Um, and I think as I think that, I sort of realise that I feel a little bit, not abandoned, but a little bit like since he stepped down, that took away a sort of level of protection almost. And I don't, I don't necessarily, I don't think myself important enough that I should think badly of him for it, but it's, it's just a feeling that sort of comes to me and I, I'm a bit annoyed at myself for feeling it. Um, but I don't say that to her and I wish her a good rest of her evening. And she wishes you the same. And nods her head and um, continues into the hotel. Um, do you keep standing there a bit longer? Yes, I think so. Um, and maybe wander down to the, the entrance mm -hmm. and glance out the window. And you see Yanina approaching the hotel. And I think this is a good moment to take a break <laughs> uh, before you get to have your conversation, whatever it will end up being. Um, thank you all so much for following the story with us. We will be back in about 15 minutes. And uh, yes, we'll see you after the break. Bye for now. And welcome back everyone. Thank you so much for staying with us and let's jump right back into it. When Bea, you see Yanina um, approaching uh, the main entrance of Hotel Bristol. I am immediately sort of hurriedly walking towards her. Um, well, perception and alertness difficulty eight. Perception and alertness. 
No, I put penalties. Sorry. <laughs> I remembered. Uh, mm -mm, mm -mm. No, let you come up to you, Nina. It's nothing usual. Um, you, Nina, as you are entering, you see Bea uh, waiting for you, coming up to you. I'm looking relieved. <laughs> well, at first, I think as I see her, like my eyes go a bit like shit. <laughs> But then I just like relax and smile, or at least try to smile. Hi, Bea. Hi, I'm glad you're here. Sorry, I was just worrying about you. Oh, sorry, I just went to feed and visit Hannah. Sorry, I figured you were probably with kill men. <laughs> and I smile a bit more like sincerely. <laughs> I mean, yes, but that doesn't mean I don't want to see you. I know, I know, I just didn't want to impose. Okay. You're never in imposition. You're my sister. Mm -hmm. you? Tired. <laughs> you? Oh, I'm fine. Okay. I'm okay. Hannah's doing well. She's recovering. I gave her a bit more of my Vita yesterday. And she's already walking on her own. So oh, that's, that's good. good. Yeah. And she's learning how to write and read. So I'm proud of her. I'm glad. Have I met her? Yes, you did. Well, okay. You did in the, when you brought her to the hospital at the time when we saved her. But was other she than that, conscious at the time? <laughs> I don't think so. Other than okay. that, I don't think. So it's I not so much a meeting. Know. I've observed her. <laughs> well, you brought her there. Okay. And at any point you want to introduce me? <laughs> I would love to. Yes, of course. She's staying at our haven, so whenever you're free to go, we can visit her. I'm sure she will be happy to meet um, her roommate. <laughs> <laughs> the roommate who's never there. Um, is our flat remotely on the way towards Mr. Lubomirsky's, or is that a very different direction? No, well, okay. Mr. Lubomirsky is not that far from here. You mm -hmm. can walk there quite quickly, easily. Okay. Um, your flat is a bit further away. Okay, so I could maybe go <coughs> there after um, and walk there. It's kind of... That's it... feasible, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, you've already seen her tonight, so maybe that wouldn't yes. be... Um, I will go see her tomorrow or the other day after? Well, depending on what my tasks are looking like, maybe I'll have time tomorrow. I'm not entirely sure what they're going to be like in the next few days, but... Of course, um, I'm very busy. Mm. <sighs> Everything's topsy-turvy. Do you have any plans for tonight? Other than going to see Mr. Lubomirsky, nothing. Oh. You're going to see him? Yes, he asked to speak with me. Um, I'm not entirely sure what it's about. Um, mm -hmm. He's not. He doesn't seem to be involved in my line of work these days. So um, maybe he wants to talk to you maybe about the situation that happened. Oh maybe. yes, yes. Well, hopefully Maybe. he will still reassure you that he got your back. We can hope. I say not feeling overly optimistic. Um, and as I'm talking, I'm sort of looking at her and trying to figure out her emotional state. Um, Are you looking at her aura? Are you looking just at her face? Um, 
I think since we're in Elysium, I'm just looking at her face, but not like... I Elysium. mean, you're technically, you're in the lobby of the We're hotel. in the lobby, I, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, go on, let's use some, let's use some aura reading. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't done um, that in a while. <laughs> Right, so roll your perception and empathy. Difficulty eight. And minus one. Difficulty eight. So many sevens, that's really unhelpful. Um, I have an eight and a nine though, so that's two successes. Two successes. So you do see in Yanina's aura, guilt, and some sort of distress. Um, I'll start trying to sort of lead her back towards our rooms. Um, um, trying to be reasonably casual about it while we're in the lobby. <laughs> um, Are you following you, Nina? Yes, of course. I if you, if there are, like, of course, I don't want to be like talking too too much in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> so you get to your rooms, no problem. Okay. Once we're once the door is closed, I sort of turn to. Are you all right? Yes, I'm. I'm fine. I just uh, had a bit of a mistake during my feeding, but it's fine. Everything's okay. Do you want to talk about it? Mm. Well, you know, you know, things happen and. I I didn't stop myself in time. Man is dead. I don't know if there's anything else to talk about. I'd like to roll self-control so I can touch her. Difficulty six. Um, three successes. No problem at all. So I lean forward and take her into my arms. I, I lean into the and hug her back. And I stroke and her hair. And relax in her embrace. And I probably like just let go and start to sob a bit. And like mutter that I'm that I'm sorry. I think it's more like to the man than like to bear. <laughs> and I don't really say anything. I just hold her throughout the crying and stroke her hair um, and to sort of make uh, gentle, soothing noises. Just let her have a moment. After a while, I just pull, pull away and wipe my tears mm-hmm. and stroke Belle's hair. Thank you. I start fussing with a handkerchief, cleaning her face off properly. <laughs> That makes me like, smile, <laughs> and after a moment, I just I just straighten myself and look into Belle's eyes. Thank you, Belle. You're always here for me. Anytime. I'm sorry. I, I guess I I should have waited for you or asked Daniel or someone else to. Accompany me when I'm, but I, I just didn't think I was that hungry. And I think back to earlier where I hadn't realized that I was injured, and I can't really bring myself to be too upset with her. So, and I'll say, um, well, maybe next time, but. No, I just, I just feel awful, but there's really nothing to be done for the deaths. Anyway. Well, if you ever need to talk, and I know things have been difficult for you recently. Yeah, I, I miss Nasty, you know. I, I just hope she's safe. And as much as I'm angry at Nastia for hurting my sister, 
I, I can't. I also some, somewhat hope that she's safe too, um, partially for Yanina's own well-being. <laughs> um, I haven't had a chance to really check in with you. I know I, I've been busy, but I healed and I show her the place where I had the wound and now it's healed. <laughs> also, I forgot to note how many bloods did oh, I Oh, you were on full blood pool. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I should have said that. Okay. No, the sorry, I just... I just murder. Yay. Tasty, tasty. I just remembered that and I didn't want to. Like, yeah, yeah, you're on full. You did the big sip. <laughs> um, sorry, where were we? I was. Uh, Yanina showing, showed uh, you that she healed. <laughs> and I'm sort of internally thinking, I healed too, but I'm not going to mention it because <laughs> um, I think she's been distressed enough as is. And I will uh, smile at her. Uh, like a proud mother and just go well done <laughs> uh, i had a pep talk from mr Pototsky. and i really want to good take good take good care of my goals now you've got two goals now yes i kind of adopted him as well oh, all right <laughs> I, I i want him to be safe and he's a good man and we work together so where did you i figured you? sorry i have a uh... Uh, it, he, he was sick in school. Oh, right. And I think it would be what Zygmunt would want. Well, at least he's not been left, I guess. Um, I, I'm, at least he has, he will have plenty of experience having worked with Mr. Ray. Um, yes, he, I feel like. I'm kindred and he's the ghoul, but he's much more wise than me. <laughs> and I smile. I slightly bite my lip, not <laughs> wanting to say anything. Um, wisdom not notoriously being in Enos. Uh, greatest strong suit. Okay, um, I guess you you have your visit with Mr. Lubomirsky. And I, I guess, I might go check on Dominico, see if Daniel's around. I haven't seen him for a few days. Well, okay. Well, I just wanted to ask about Nastia. You're. In... I understand that you care very much for her. Oh, so I... I love her. I just, I just want to make sure you're not going to do anything reckless? Uh, anyway. I'm not doing anything to save Nasty from the Sabbath. I'm not going to be running there. So don't worry. Okay. Promise. Could I insight check her? <laughs> yeah. well, I think Yanin is like honest right now because right now she isn't like thinking about storming the Sabbath. That's fine, Bear just wants to double check. <laughs> right, roll your perception and empathy. Um, difficulty six? Six, yes. Um, uh, three successes. So you see that, that she's not thinking about it right now, she is being honest. Okay. Is there anything more Bear could see, or is that about it? I think there's like me missing Nastya and still thinking about her like that she's like a victim and that she isn't with Sabat and that if there will be an opportunity that Yanina will try to save her but other than that, that there is nothing like urgent that mm. so it's more like if something came up and it yes. became an option yes. then yeah. right <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I will mentally keep that to myself for the time being. And All right. But what I will do is just sort of lean forward and, and take her in my arms and just go, I'm, 
I'm glad that you're not planning anything. I, I don't want to see you get into any trouble. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah. And there's many people that love you and worry about you. I know. And I love all of you. See you, Danny. And uh, now I'm a ghoul mom, so. <laughs> Got your responsibilities. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have to stay safe and out of trouble for them. Good. And Tony's also been worried about you. <laughs> oh, how's, how's he doing? Busy. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. That's like match made in the Bristol Apple. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose so. Um, well, we at least don't have an understanding there, certainly. Um, you seem like a good fit. I'm glad. I hope I so. can't wait to see you all cuddly together. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> oh. oh, it's good. It, it's good to see you happy. Thank you. All right, I'm. I'm gonna. Not gonna be keeping you any longer. I'm gonna go check the museum. Look if there's anyone I could talk. Well, mainly Daniel because I'm gonna see him, but. He's Daniel. also a busy man right now. That's fair. Uh, do send Daniel my best if you see him. I will. And I give Belle one wild hug before I leave. You leave, leaving Belle in the room. Um, hey Nina, how are you feeling after the conversation with Belle? Well, I feel better that I told someone about what happened today and for helping understanding and not scolding me. So it was comforting and reassuring. And I know she cares about me a lot, so I understand her worry about Nastya. And, I, and I'm glad I was honest with her right now. So I think that's that's the main things that Yang is thinking about as she walks into the museum. All right. And Bea, you're left in the room and just <coughs> running through your head after this conversation. Uh, worry. <laughs> Loads of worry. Um, I'm making a note to tell Antonio that there's not like an immediate uh, thing, but I'll just have to do my best to make sure that I can keep her from any opportunities, so to speak. Um, and I'm thinking that I might have to see if there's others that could help keep an eye on her because I can only be around so often and glancing at my to-do list and what I'm potentially going to be doing with the spat, I don't know how long that's going to take me away. Um, so I might need to get some support. <sighs> but I still have my meeting with Mr. Lubomirsky, so once I've finished making my notes, I will um, put on a coat and head on out. Um, and you do that and you take a early short walk uh, towards uh, the building of the Central Committee of the Polish United Workers Party, where Mr. Lubomirski has his office. Meanwhile, Janina, um, you're heading towards Elysium. Um, you walk in there. Um, you don't see Daniel. You see okay. that um, Mihail is there. He was missing for the last night, but he is now back. And Stefania is sitting next to him, and his child, Anna Maria, is also there. Um, you see um, 
Joachim and Magdalena, the Tremere, in one corner. You see a couple of people you've seen before, but not quite spoke to. Um, you see um, Clemens, the Nosferatu um, hound, there, just sort of looking like he's keeping an eye on things, um, looking fairly bored. And you see coming towards you, almost as you enter, um, Nina, the Teviador, uh, who runs up to you with a smile, smile and just says, Yanina, come on, come, come, let's walk with me. And she leads you out, just not super far out, but just into the corridor and a bit I'll, further. I'll go with her and, I, and I'm smiling since I see her smile. Try I to don't smile. know what you said to Isidore, but thank you. Have you patched things up? Y yes, we have. I have and I sincerely smile. I, I think it's going to be all right. I, I, I think... Thank you so much. I, I don't know what you how you've done it. He he can be so stubborn. Uh, well, I would oh, know. Oh, I know. I know. How are you holding up? Uh, sorry, Dolores, I can't hear you. I I'm okay. I just I'm happy to see you and Isidore back together and. Bea and Antoni. I'm happy for, for you guys. Bea's yes, with Antoni. Oh. And I wow. just like. <laughs> well. Sorry, you got muted, Dolores. <laughs> You're well, it's again. Michael, it's muting. He's, yeah. <laughs> he's, I didn't realize that he was like pressing my keyboard. It's <laughs> right. a catastrophe. <laughs> He, he wants my supper. <laughs> okay. Well. Um, okay. Yeah. What was the last thing you heard? <laughs> uh, Nina asked just bad eyes with Antoni. Okay. All right. Oh, I. And yeah, Nina just looks <laughs> away, embarrassed. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to spread rumors, <laughs> but yeah, she is. No, it's, it's a great rumor. She. Wow, good for her. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy for her. She deserves happiness and love. And Anton is a good man. I would never I think, think it's that, that serious. I think it is, because I can imagine Bea having a non-serious relationship. But I don't know. Well, um, well I hope. They're happy together in that case. They, I think they are. They are certainly very happy. I haven't had a chance to talk with Anthony. I don't think many people get a chance to talk to him. Yeah, he's a busy man. But look at him, finding a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't really know him, but... Well, good for Bear. Certainly. Yes, I am very happy for her and for you. I was worried. But I'm glad that he decided to not be stubborn as we usually are. Well, he cares about you a lot. I can only hope so. Thank you so much. If you need anything. Of course. I well. I don't think there's that much I can do in terms of she kind of looks around to with her eyes gesture to the whole hotel. But if I can help somehow, let me know. Of course I will. I'm, too, I'm just happy to have a friend and to see that my friends are getting well and getting back together. I need to be better than I was. I'm sure you'll Not be do this again. I'm sure you, you and Isidore will go through this and learn something from it. He'll make you stronger. Peace. Well, 
he's great. Sometimes I don't think I deserve him, especially mm. now, but I'm happy. I, I'm happy I, I can't you. thank you enough. Just be happy and try to not do things behind his back again. I know, I, I need to. Just, just tell him next time and figure things out on your own. I'm sure he would always help you and make sure you didn't get into any trouble because of that. He would, yes. I, you're right, I need to be better. Well, you're already are getting better, you're realizing where you went wrong and you're going to do better. I believe in you. Thank you. You're... Wow. I just thank you so much. I think Yangin is genuinely like happy for Nina because she sees that she's really like happy and that makes Yangin happy too. And Nina gives you a hug in the end. I hug um, her back. And then she says goodbye and she runs off, but she repeats that if you, if she can help you with anything, just come to her. I smile and I just probably go slowly back to the Elysium and just look around. But if there is no Daniel or Dominic, I think I'm going to go away. <laughs> uh, no Daniel or Dominic in the Elysium. Mm. Okay, in that case, I just look around, smile at those kindred that I'm in closer terms with, like Joachim and other, and just leave. And, and where are you heading? I think for a bit I will go to my room and mm -hmm. just, I don't know, wash my face a bit, because I feel like even if, well, like, Oh, help me with her handkerchief. I feel, I still like feel the tears on, like dry tears on my face, even though they aren't visible. So I just want to, I don't know. I just feel like I need a bit of my own alone time. Absolutely. And you go there and you splash your face with water. Uh, washing off or not the tears that aren't really there, but you still feel them. Meanwhile, there, uh, you arrive uh, at the uh, Central Committee building. Um, and as you are entering, you do see uh, Miss Ochatska, a woman, older woman uh, wearing glasses, um, carrying uh, a box with documents and books, placing it on a table near the door, and she sees you. Ah, Ms. Wojniak. Good evening, Ms. Ryczewska. Um, a pleasure. Uh, Mr. Lubomirski was hoping to speak with you. Please follow me. Thank you. Follow behind her. As per usual, I think whenever I walk into a room with her, I always end up straightening my spine somewhat. <laughs> So doing that, you follow her uh, towards familiar office uh, where she just looks inside to announce you and gestures for you to come in. I'll smile and nod to her and then mm. head inside. Um, and inside you see Mr. Lubomirski um, dressed as always in an elegant suit uh, where he's carefully arranged uh, silvery grey facial hair and hair, um, standing near um, his desk. Um, and as you're entering, he's holding a leather bound uh, book with uh, golden writing on the cover. He's not quite opening it, maybe flicks through the pages. Um, from just a quick glance, you get the feeling the book is very well made, 
uh, but fairly old. You see mm. a bit of wear with time. And there are a couple more uh, volumes like that lying on the desk. Okay. Is there a title or anything on the spine that I can spot? So you mm. spot the author, uh, Andrzej Fritsch Modrzewski, and you do see the titles in Latin. And if you want, you can roll intelligence and academics to see if so that's... Intelligence. <laughs> That's a uh, difficulty, I think, eight. Yeah, no. <laughs> you don't have a clue have who no that idea. was. I don't speak Latin. <laughs> you don't speak Latin, the name means nothing to you. Um, and as you are... Uh, Enter and I'll, I'll, I'll still bow to him, because um, that's my habit. <laughs> and he puts the book back with the other volumes. And roll your perception and empathy, actually. Okay. A difficulty is six, yes. Okay. Oh. Um, four successes. Interesting. You actually roll better than me. <laughs> oh my um, god. Strangely, that never it wasn't happens. a good role. <laughs> yes, so as he's putting the book down, you do see in him, as he just looks briefly before he focuses on you at the volumes, the feeling of sadness and regret and loss. Uh, and then he focuses on you, pushing the thoughts, they're not completely gone. Uh, but he pushes them to the side and looks at you. And says, oh, Miss Wojniak, good evening. Uh, it's good to see you, sir. Pleasure to see you. Thank you for coming. Please take a seat. And I will do so. I wanted to take this one last, at least for a long time, opportunity to speak with you before I take my leave of this city. I will. I will. You seem surprised. Just many changes, I suppose. But there are many changes indeed, but you must understand this is how things need to be. Very well, sir. I will trust your judgment on this matter. Um, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. I wanted to take this opportunity to thank you for um, your work um, throughout the last months. I won't be able to guide it, but I am sure you have a bright future ahead of you. Thank you, sir. I I'm going to miss your guidance, sir. Then before I leave, let me reassure you. I know you are concerned by the affliction that comes with your Vita. You do not need to be. You performed all your duties and you managed it well. And I am sure you will continue to do so. Thank you, sir. That is very comforting. I wouldn't say it if I didn't believe that was going to be the case. I understand, sir. Thank you. How are you, Ms. Wojniak? Busy, I suppose. Um, a bit uncertain as to what the future holds. And again, I'm thinking about working closely with Mr. Sunovsky. And there's that uncertainty sort of grows as I'm considering that. Um, the sort of trepidation that comes with that. 
Although I do my best to try and hide that emotion. <laughs> of all your self-control and subterfuge. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> I've rolled tens, but I don't have any specialties, so it <laughs> doesn't mean anything. Uh, um, three successes. <laughs> All right, well, um, Mr. Lubomirsky says first, desire certainly in certain times, and then he looks to you. Something is troubling you, Ms. Vozniak. I am due to be continuing the work that I was doing with you, sir, um, under Mr. Cernovsky's um, oversight. Um, I have seen the way in which he operates, and whilst I, uh, I obviously respect him immensely, I am simply a little concerned. And as you're saying all this, you see that as you mentioned that you're going to be working uh, under Mr. Sernowski, who is, as you suggest, taking it over. You see that he's not happy to hear this. There is this certain, uh, maybe not anger as such, but this dissatisfaction. But then he kind of pushes it to the side as if making himself not act on that. Mm. <laughs> um, and he listens to you and focuses on you. Uh, and then I'll sort of once I've finished saying that, say, but there's no, no point complaining about it. It simply is what it is. Well, you were always very eager to help and contribute to the Camarilla, Ms. Vozniak. Yes, sir, and I will and continue I'm, to do so. <laughs> that is not what I wanted to say. I'm sure you will, but if I can give you one more word of advice, your enthusiasm and initiative is welcome and it will be rewarded. I am sure the Prince will ensure that, but you don't have to agree to everything that you're asked. There is nothing inappropriate in saying that you do not feel prepared to carry out certain tasks. I notice you have a tendency to suppress it. There is a balance to be walked there. Of course, you don't want to issue all responsibility, but it is not always an offense to another to decline. You could risk overstretching yourself and failing your duties in that way. So you need to assess carefully um, where your responsibilities lie and what you can take upon yourself. And I sort of pause, sort of musing on this as he says it and I guess trying to commit it to memory, even though it's a little bit, um, even though that's a bit of a fool's errand with me, but I take it seriously and then look back to him. Thank you, sir. I will think on this. Of course, the situation with your task is outside my control now. I understand, sir. But I trust your capabilities however you choose to go about this. And, sir, I wish to say thank you for allowing me the opportunity to uh, work with you. It has been a pleasure, Ms. Wojniak, and I wish you all the best 
in your long, long life. Thank you, sir. And I hope that the next city treats you well. If you are ever in Berlin, ask about me. That is where I'm going. Yes, sir. Thank you. And there's a sort of, there's a genuine feeling that I, I'm going to miss his presence in the city, uh, not just for like political um, um, reasons, but he has been a very stable and practical individual that I've appreciated. I haven't always gone to him for guidance, but when he has offered it to me, I've always appreciated it. And yeah, I guess there's a sadness there. Um, but um, I think there's also a part of me that's glad that that's hoping that Berlin will be a less tumultuous place for him to be. And I'm sure that he will do well wherever he goes. <laughs> and do you say your goodbyes with that and leave? Yes. Then you step out of his office. And as you do, you see his eyes wander back to the books on his desk. And you see this sadness and sense of loss again. I guess for a moment I sort of pause in the doorway seeing that sort of feeling of loss and this part of me that wonders if I could help with that but I know I can only temporarily suppress emotions and I guess I sort of mentally hope that he can recover from this loss, this feeling of loss that he's experiencing soon. But I don't think I say anything because it feels like it's for him and he doesn't necessarily want me to see it. <laughs> um, so I quietly close the door. And you step out into the corridor and I presume leave the building. Yes. If I see Ms. Archevska, then I will also wish her farewell. And I, I think I'll inquire as to whether she will be staying in the city or whether she will be accompanying Mr. Lubomirsky. I will be accompanying Mr. Lubomirsky. Well, then, I wish you all the best in Berlin. Thank you. Oral perception and empathy. Okay. Um, Difficulty six. Um, would insightful or hidden pain apply? Uh, insightful would. Okay. Six successes. <laughs> As she says that you, you see the devotion in her eyes are, uh, as she says, even Mr. Lubomirsky's name and then love on her face that's almost absolute. Mm -hmm. uh, but you also see certain nervousness, as you mentioned, going to a different city and that especially makes her tense up and there's this uncertainty, um, this feeling of being uprooted lack of familiarity that she um so that she doesn't know how to approach but mm -hmm. is not used to it something new yes. and she feels very unsettled and scared okay um in which case sort of as i say that i wish you all the best um i will express into her that um 
sure that basically that I'm sure that she will be fine and try and assure her whilst not making it too obvious that I've spotted what she was feeling and just making it sound just like polite small talk just trying to make her feel a bit better Roll charisma and etiquette mm. <laughs> charisma and etiquette I'm rolling polite I'm rolling etiquette it's a whole night of it um Does polite come into this? Yes. Um, in which case, four successes. You're very small, and she yeah. thanks you <laughs> and says, "Thank you. I wish you all the best here, Miss Vosniak." Thank you. Take care, and I will leave. You walk back into the night in the falling snow. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Yanina, you are in your room. You washed your face um, when you hear the knocking on your door. Who's this? Um, it's Magdalena, I believe we've met briefly before. Oh, and I... I was hoping we might speak, if that's I... not a problem. No. no, and I just quickly come to the door and open and um... give her a smile. You see Magdalena, a woman looking to be maybe in her early 20s, uh, with shoulder length brown straight hair and wearing a very simple grey dress. Um, standing there looking a bit shy, looking to you. I'm sorry to disturb you. No, I no. was hoping to speak to you and no. wasn't sure when to catch you. Oh, it's... It's always something like we we are all somewhere doing stuff. And I just like open the door and lead her inside. She comes in and you see her take a glance around, but she doesn't really stare. She mostly seems focused on you. I, well, I just wanted to talk to you about your project. I've heard that you are working on preserving blood and creating some kind of supply network and I was wondering if there's any way I could help I well I was studying medicine before the war and um, maybe I could assist you in some way that that would be very nice. I, I just have to figure out. Um, Before you say that, I know. Yanina I remember. would remember. You remember? I know. What they I remember. Say. Okay, you yes, do. I remember, but she's. I don't want to be impolite, and I. All I right, remember. of course. So what you continue? She seems nice, so. I. I think I'm gonna check with Mr. Potocki at the hospital. If there's anything you could be helping us with and let you know. Who's Mr. Potocki? He's he's the man that Sigmund assigned to help me with the project. All right. Then I, I just I just feel like I'm not the only one there. But of course I I'm sure we will want your help. Or perception and empathy. Difficulty six. Okay. Three successes. Three successes. So you see that she is taken aback when, like, you explain who Mr. Potoski is and you say you need to check in with him. It's not that she has any bad feelings about this. She just, like, is genuinely surprised and doesn't understand for a moment what you are talking like why you're doing this like that um but then she kind of collects herself and says of course i well anything i can do and if you want to discuss any um medical side of things i i'm rusty but maybe i could help oh that would be definitely 
very good to have someone skilled. And I understand you. We all want to keep busy because just sitting here is, isn't what most of us want to do. It Maybe is. Except the sorry others. <laughs> she kind of smiles at that. It is, and I, I would really appreciate having something to do. And you see that it's not this, like it's not. You see through her, so you see that that. When she says it is genuine, I know my sire is not happy with me. And Why not? I, is Mr. Cernovsky or so? Yes, Mr. Cernovsky is her sire. Okay. I'm not. I. I suppose I struggle with being a kindred and I'm not as quick to adjust to everything as he'd like me to be and I, I think he thinks I'm useless or begins to think that and I not useless. can't have him think that and you do see that she is like what she's saying is genuine and she is scared and genuinely worried as she's saying this. Uh, but you see there's some guilt as she's, she's talking to you as well. Oh, I, I'm i sorry if you like this, but I'm sure we'll figure something out, but you're not useless. It's just difficult time for everyone. And I I will make sure we find something for you to do. So you ah, have you. Some, something to do with your mind and your hands. I, I know it feels I stuck. will be really grateful for that. I, I'll let you know tomorrow or the day after. I'm just going to write it down because I will definitely forget yeah. all it. So. She says, oh, thank you, Yanina. I know we didn't get many chances to speak before. Um, but I really appreciate your help. Of course, I, I mean, there's not much I can do for anyone when, when I can do something like that. For a fellow kindred, of course, I, I want to I wanna help you and I want you to feel better about yourself. I know she knows her ad and you... You see that she feels genuinely grateful, and again, there is this feeling of guilt somewhere there as well. Okay. Uh, well, I'll leave you to it. I don't want to disturb you. Just let me know. I'll, of course, I will. I will find you in the museum. Uh, I'll nice be there. I'm mostly you. there right now. Okay. Say hi to Joachim for me. I will. And, well, say hello to Beatrice, although I didn't get to speak with her that much either. I, I will relay her your greetings. Thank you, Nina. And she leaves. And how are you feeling about uh, all this? I feel like conflicted because I remember what Dickman said. And but at the same time I I want to help her. She wants to be useful and I understand that she's probably feeling a lot of like why. Not having something to do and just sit there with her thoughts. It must be very hard. And she seems to want to please her sire, who I know even from Bea is a scary kind of guy. <laughs> so so I I want to give her a chance and I want to run it past. Mr. Potosky, I'm not sure how much he knows if he will be willing to accept 
someone. I just, I just don't know how could, she could like. I don't think she would sabotage the project, so I don't really see the reason why she couldn't help us with it, <laughs> considering her sire is a part of Camarilla. Um, all right, so with those thoughts after that conversation, what do you do next? Mm, I think I'm just thinking about trying to figure out what we like what she could help us with maybe she could like also work with Hanna but be like the supervisor for her and explain some more we well, definitely like that, think so. that you know Hanna will need someone to train yeah. her she learned the very basics Petoski but she doesn't has, understand yes. yeah and Mr Potoski has a lot of his own like, regular work to do as well so I think that would be very good for Magda maybe she and Anna also I don't know became friends and she would also have someone else to chat with so so that's probably what I'm thinking for a while and after that I think I'm gonna try to go find Dominic all right so you I'll first go check the uh, the attic, was it attic? All right. Uh, all right, so you will be heading towards the yeah. attic to find uh, the mirror. Um, and meanwhile, Bea, you are returning yes. to Hustle Bristol. Um, what is your intention? Where do you intend to go once you get there? Um, how much of the night will be left at that point? Will it still be reasonably early or will it? It's halfway-ish, okay. getting towards the second. It's, it's second. No, it's maybe not halfway, but like mm. start of the second half of the night. That's fine. Um, I might go check in with Arak again. Um, right. But while I'm walking, I think I'm sort of pondering Mr. Lubomirsky leaving the city. Um, and it it strikes me that I've no memories of ever leaving the city. I'm not entirely sure what the world outside looks like in a lot of ways. Like I've maybe seen like some pictures in books or newspapers, but it all feels not that real to me. It feels about as real as some of my nightmares. It's, to be fair, it can feel quite real. Um, so, like, leaving had never sounded like an option to me before, and it's very odd to hear somebody just saying, oh, I'm going. <laughs> um, um, but, It's not like I'm considering the, the idea because ultimately this is my home. Um, this is the place that I know the streets of. I can only imagine what it would be like if I had to try and memorize a whole new city, let alone a whole new country. Um, and suddenly that feels a little bit stifling, but also comforting. Um, and I can I sort of ponder that on my route back. Um, and you walk back and you get to the hotel and um, enter the lobby uh, where you see um, Elisa and Rahela sitting at the table. Uh, and Vahela glances to you and nods her head, gives you a smile. Elisa first doesn't notice you, and then mm. she notices Vahela having noticed you and looks to you and gives you a nod. I give them an understanding sort of smile. Um, 
and I'll maybe sort of greet them as I go past, but I'm probably heading towards Arik now, unless they look as though they want to talk to me. <laughs> uh, not quite necessarily, but as you are start, um, well, first heading up the stairs to then take a turn mm-hmm. and go a different way into the basement, you hear the door open and footsteps coming in. Uh, do you look back? Sure. <laughs> Um, Then you see Antoni stepping through the door, um, holding it open, and next to him, uh, following him, engaged in a conversation with him, you see a man, uh, maybe in his 40s, early 50s, uh, with graying black hair, dressed, all in black and long black coat. Underneath it, you can see a uh, shirt and a blazer and trousers all in the same color, who steps through um, and continues. And you see that Daniel steps through the door as well and takes over holding the door. And Antoni continues with conversation in conversation with this man and following. Um, then closely is an older woman who steps in. She's slightly hunched forward and walking with an elegant cane. You can hear the sound of the cane very gently mm-hmm. uh, as she moves. Um, she um, has a white shirt with a high neck on and on that grey trousers and grey blazer looking very distinguished, very elegant, although uh, slightly hunched forward as she walks and you see her dark, very dark, almost black eyes are looking around very alert. Um, And behind them you see Mr. Cernovsky walking in and engaged in a conversation with a very pale uh, man with blonde hair looking to be maybe around 40 at most and he looks thin, almost malnourished. Mm -hmm. As you look at him you can see that where you can see um, his skin underneath, well, f- coming out from under his clothes, mm-hmm. um, just a kind of basic gray suit that he's wearing. Uh, his skin is so pale and thin that you can see his blue veins through it. And he's talking to Mr. Cernovsky as they walk in. Um, okay. And you see, well, actually, as you are looking at them, roll your perception on a cold. Oh boy. Before you see anything yeah. else. Difficulty eight. Does insightful apply here? Um, yes, actually. Four successes. All right. In which case, as you look to them, whatever you are going to do is paused by this feeling of air in the lobby shifting around them as if to recoil as they enter. And you get a faint smell of blood, earth and decay. And then you feel like you are suffocating. Something is crushing your chest, crushing your brain, squeezing everything out of you until until you're crushed to dust. And you get this sense of fear and wanting to recoil as you almost feel the worms crawling on your skin and you want to move away just as the air and ground under their feet seems to want to recoil. probably find myself sort of like like zoned out staring at them for a moment and then sort of shake myself as I come back to and sort of glance around to see if anyone caught me staring. (laughs) Um, 
You don't think so. You see that Elisa has come up to them and is talking now to the man dressed in black who is uh, standing next to Antoni and they exchange a few words and she starts walking in, walking with them as the man just gestures for her to follow. Can I read any of their expressions at all? Yes, um, roll your uh, perception and empathy. Let's find out if I can. Well, let's see. Difficulty six. Mm, difficulty six, yes. Yeah. Um, if insightful applies or hidden pain, then that's five, if not four. Right. Um, so you can't read the man at all. And <laughs> Elisa, um, let's see. Um, yeah, so you see that she is terrified. She is putting on a very calm, composed face, but it is barely there. She can barely control it. She is scared, but she's looking very determined. Um, it's not like you feel that she has clearly decided that this is how it needs to be and she's following on some decision that she made um, okay. and uh, despite fear and any resistance she might feel she is determined to push through and keep going uh, and there is both tension and certain relief at the in the moment as she's walking with them. Okay. I glance back at the man in black's other companions, um, just to see how they're reacting or if they've even reacted at all. Um, you see that the older woman um, took a good look at her. Is focused on Elisa and she's observing her, glancing towards her, but she's not saying anything. Mm -hmm. She's more focused on observing the surroundings. Um, and the very pale man is still in conversation with Mr. Sarnowski. Uh, he took a look, he didn't completely ignore this, mm -hmm. uh, but it didn't seem to interrupt the flow of the conversation much. Okay. I think I just stay stood at the top of the stairs, um, observing what you them. Also, notice is that Rahela is staring at the man dressed in black, looking absolutely mesmerized, uh, scared, and intrigued, and determined. Okay. But it's like she can't take her eyes off him. Okay. Um, I think I've seen, have I seen her look like that before? I've got a feeling that I have. Okay, no. Not quite, no. Yeah. Um, it's like, well, perception and empathy again, actually. Okay. It was an evening a bit. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I'm rolling I'm rolling very well for these tonight. Um that is five successes. Five successes. So there's almost like a recognition but confusion and fascination and she's intrigued and as she's looking there is this determination settling in and she's tense and scared. Uh but she's entirely focused on this man and something that it evokes in her mind and her thoughts. Okay. I think I'm going to head back down the stairs to go sit with them and perhaps and perhaps I will end up interacting with the party if that is polite to do so, mm -hmm. but I think I want to go and sit next to her and maybe talk to her um, once, once this particular group is out of earshot. <laughs> um, 
All right, so you start heading downstairs to do that. And as you pass Antoni, he gives you a smile and a nod. I think uh, so. And Daniel gives you a nod as he continues up. Mm -hmm. um, but the rest of the party, Mr. Sarnowski acknowledges you, but the three who have just arrived um, with maybe a quick asking glance to Antoni by the man dressed in black, mm -hmm. uh, mostly ignore you. The woman with dark eyes, the older woman, she gives you a more careful look. But her just, eyes don't linger. I just nod to her politely. Should any of them look at me, I will nod to all of them. Um, and they continue up the stairs as you head down. And Elisa continues with them. She, as you pass her, glances towards you, gives you a nod, and then continues with this determined expression. You get the feeling sort of relieved now she spoke to them. Mm -hmm. but still very tense. Okay. And I think as they leave, it takes the sort of suffocating feeling that I felt in that vision with me a little bit, that it still kind of lingers over me. And I go and sit next to Rahela. And you see Rahela at first doesn't notice you. She's still looking after uh, them. But then, of course, they disappear from view and she blinks a few times, shakes herself and looks towards you. But before we come to that, Yanina, um, you were heading up the stairs uh, to the attic um, and you hear somebody's steps. Um, you don't hear any music, but you hear someone moving um, on the floor, the steps of uh, walking, jumping at the fast pace as you approach. Um, and yeah. open the door and sneak in. Uh, and you see Diana uh, dressed in fairly loose trousers and white shirt with a saber in her hand, practicing on her own movement. And as you enter, she, a mid movement, just stops. And looks to you, Yanina. Good evening, Diana. See you've been practicing again. I. Yes. It seems to be the one thing I can do. I I didn't want to impose. I was looking for Dominic, and I thought I I would try to check here first. In case he was here. Well, perception and empathy now you. Um, difficulty six. Um, three successes. As you're saying, you think she's not even hiding it at the moment. Um, you realize as you start speaking and the more you talk, the more these feelings grow, that she's nervous, she's scared. Um, she's very, very worried. Sorry, it's okay. This is good. No, Dominic, he... He was gone. He went somewhere. He's, he's missing. My sire went looking for him. I'm, I'm sure he'll call, call him back and find him, but... Oh my God. I... He, he left without telling, leaving anything. He's been it. gone for, well, hours. Okay, I... Uh, if you see him, please, please let me know. I worry to, you know, I'm gonna, I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna go find Bear and try to see if maybe she could try to help locating him. Um, Just think positively. Everything's gonna be okay, we'll find him. We already find, found him once. We find him again. I... She kind of looks to you almost like she's only half taking in what you're saying. Uh, okay, yes, I mean, I I'm sure, I'm sure my sire will find him. I'm sure he will. I I'm gonna go see if Belle's back from her appointment. Sorry to give you that news, I... No, 
I'm, I'm glad I know you told me I, I was unaware completely. And there's like worry inside of me, but I try to like suppress it for now because I don't want to cause Diana more stress than she's already feeling. And I will just excuse myself and leave her and go to check Belle's room. All right, you don't find Belle in her room. Okay, uh, in that case I will... Do I know where I could find, try to find Lucian? You don't have a clue. You know where Dominic is staying, presumably with him. Okay, in that case... But that's... from Diana, what Diana was mm. saying, you would have gotten the sense that Lucian's gone. He's not, like, okay. waiting around there. All right, in that case, I... I don't know, I would... I will probably go to the Zoom and just try to pass time until I see Bea. All right. Uh, meanwhile, Bea. Less fully unaware again. Um, so you come up to Rahela and um, sit down with Hershey. Finally, blinks a couple of times, looks to you. Bea. Everything all right? Yes, I think so. You seem I... quite captivated by our newest arrivals. Or at least one of them. Yes, I got the sense that I... And you see that she is scared now that she's kind of thinking about it, but she is suppressing it and getting very determined. I, I think I know what I need to do. Can I ask? I think he's... I... I... Well, your charisma and persuasion with difficulty Six. Okay. Because she trusts you. <laughs> My brain just went a silly decision, really. <laughs> it could be worse. Uh, could be worse. Um, difficulty six, he said. Um, yes. Three successes. She looks to you and says, before he died, before he was killed, my sire told me I was going to find what I'm looking for, and all I've been looking for is a place in this society and a patron. And when I spoke to our primogen yesterday, they told me that Many would shiver at the thought of what's ahead of me. But they didn't dissuade me. I think he's the one. I know it. I know he's the one. I hope. That's the case. Although I also look concerned because mm -hmm. I'm now quite aware of the Tremere's reputation. <laughs> um, do be careful. I know, I know what they're like. Yes, of course. I just... And I sort of looked at her and then back in the direction of where the man in black went. And I'd once again like to activate Eyes of Chaos and just I want to know if there really is something tying them together, if there is something important there that she needs to follow or if it's just danger. Roll. 
difficulty eight. And I have one success. Got and one success. Ten doubles. Um, yeah, all right. Uh, so you get a sense, two successes, yeah. Okay. Um, you get a sense of her walking on a very sharp edge, dripping with blood, and walking on it confidently never wobbling, even when it cuts for her feet, even when her heart wants to run a different way. But you get the sense that she is walking and getting colder and colder as the blood on the edge she walks freezes. Most this part of me, probably like the old part of me, the part of me that Felicia really tried to nourish, that is glad that she that she will find a purpose. And then there's another part of me that Yanina and Mara and others have tried to have helped to cultivate in me that feel sad seeing her become colder and colder. And I don't want to take the decision away from her because ultimately it's her decision to make, but I want to tell her what I've seen. And so I relay what I've seen to her. She nods her head and you see that she's not unconcerned. She's not unmoved. She more tries to appear unmoved than she actually is but she says i think well if that is a way to survive then that is how it needs to be could i uh roll self-control to touch her absolutely difficulty seven Uh, three successes. Um, in which case, I give her a smile that attempts to be comforting but probably comes across a little more worried. And then just lean forward and I will attempt to give her a hug. Um, and as you hug her, you see some of this cold resolve that was really just. Uh, pose she was trying to adapt melts and she hugs you uh, and she she's very small she hugs with all her body to you mm. and you feel her shaking a little bit but she tries to control it and I think just as I held Yanina earlier my hand ends up sort of brushing sort of the back of her hair slightly and I just hold her close and there's something that feels oddly right for physical contact here in the act of holding ultimately a child. I just hold her as long as she's happy to be held. And she stays like that for not very long, but a while. After which she smiles at you and says, thank you. I, I know it will be difficult, but it's also my way to maybe stay in touch with Elisa. I understand. I won't try to dissuade you, but... Thank you. Know that I'm here for you, and I'm sure Yanina would also say the same thing. If you ever need a sanity check, so to speak. And you get both 
but she's grateful for it. And she's almost like feeling like she can't think in this way. She needs to leave this behind. Uh, but she can't quite, mm -hmm. at least yet. And then I'll say to her, I understand about duty or about needing to do the difficult things. To get by in this society. I understand. She just nods her head and leans into you again for a moment. And I just keep my arm wrapped around her. Um, meanwhile, Yanina, you are sitting uh, in the Elysium. And as you do, you do see the same group of people walking through. Um, you see Daniel is with them, kind of trailing behind now. Um, and you would also hear that Antoni and the man dressed in black coat are speak conversing in German, whereas uh, Mr. Cernovsky and the very pale man are speaking Russian. Okay, I probably don't linger very long on either of them. I think my eyes just go to Daniel. Like I acknowledge their presence and they are, that they are new people, but I'm just glad to see Daniel. So I think my eyes just linger on him. Uh, he also catches your eye and just gives you this stay here sort of <laughs> glance. Um, and after the group disappears uh, into a corridor that leads to some of the offices that Kindred use, um, he detaches himself from the group and starts heading towards you. I smile at him. More broadly when I see you. Here him. you are. I was looking for you. Well, I was looking for you too. Missed you. And I well, get up and to give him a hug. He hugs you. Where did you go first thing when you get up? I went to feed. <sighs> the usual. And then I went to visit Hannah, my ghoul. Right. I, I was just worried. That's all. I, I came I to find you when I got up and you weren't there. I'm sorry I was looking for you when I got back. You weren't here. You're a busy man lately. Well, so, yes, I had a job to do, but... Who are those people? The... Primogen of Clan Shamir. Oh. And <laughs> no, the, okay. the one in front, the one talking to Antoni, okay. all dressed in black. And two who accompanied him. Okay, and I glance back. Are they? they the, the They're speakers? gone. Okay. They're gone. Oh, um, I still glance at the direction. You see that Mihai is also gone now. Okay. Well, I guess Clan Tremere is really growing from one person to. Yes, oh, they are. Well. They seem to be, well, I couldn't understand most of what they were saying. They don't speak Polish okay. from what I gathered. Uh, speak a mixture of languages with Antoni and uh, Mr. Saranowski. Well, have you been with Antoni recovering them or did you just bring them here? No, I went. We went to an airfield. They came on a plane. Oh, okay. Fancy. Well, I suppose if you are an elder of a very well organized clan, you can organize things like that. Well, interesting. Well, it's nice to see more kindred that aren't so bad. 
Yeah. I mean, it was pretty uneventful. I have a feeling I was there just for show. I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. if it came to anyone trying to attack, I would have been there. Well, except for Antony may be the least dangerous person to deal with. Well, I'm glad nothing happened and you're safe. Yeah, so am I. Well, I'm not, not sure I, if you heard, but Dominic's gone. He's missing again. Oh, I, no, I have not heard that. And I haven't seen Lucian. I guess he's looking for him. I don't know. Wait, what he... exactly happened? How exactly do you know this? I went to look for him in the attic. You know, remember when we used to see him dance and stuff? And I thought he is going to be there. And there was Diana, and she told me that he's missing, that he went out and he's missing for a few hours. I, I'm not sure. And Lucian is looking for him. That's all I know, and honestly, I'm very nervous. I worry about him. And now I'm waiting for Bea to come home. Right, come. And he kind of just grabs <laughs> your wrist and starts pulling you out of the Elysium. Okay, I, I follow him. And he pulls you like somewhere into a corridor to kind of be out of okay. a new shot and some more. And then he looks to you. Okay, Yanina, let's get one thing straight. I don't know what's going on. I hope um, he's found and everyone is safe. But if this is some kind of shit like the last time again, you are not getting involved in this. No, I'm just, I I just want to find Bea. I want her to try and look if he's in danger or what with her powers. Right. Okay. Well. Have you seen her? Yes, she was. uh, I saw her as we were coming in. She was in the lobby. I think she walked back downstairs. Okay, I'm going to go look for her. Right, but Yanina, nothing stupid, okay? I promise. Nothing stupid. I, I, I just want to know. If, if he's fine and what's going on. All How right, go find Bear, but okay. just don't run off anywhere, okay? I won't. I'll be in the Elysium if you want to run okay. off. Come and get me first. All right. And you know this is so that he can stop you. <laughs> yeah, I know. But right now I'm going to just give him another hug and go try to find Bear. So you start heading towards the lobby, and as you are up uh, on the balcony, overlooking it and about to go downstairs, you see Bea sitting with Rahela at one of the tables uh, in the cafe at the very outside. Um, And Rahela is just leaning on her slightly. Well, I see they're having an emotional moment, so I will probably stay stand there watching them until Raquel leaves or Bea leaves. Bea. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Rahela is naming to you. What well, your perception and alertness, actually? Okay. <laughs> uh, difficulty um, eight, I would say, because you are uh, focused on someone else. That's fair. I, am I aware of the um well i had an eight but the two ones tell me i'm not noticing her at you're all. not also not noticing her at all you're uh completely oblivious to anything going on you're focused on rahela um who sits up a little bit eventually well i Thank you for checking in on me. Of course. I appreciate it. I'm here for you, just as you've been here for me. I hope this will work out. I hope that you find your path. 
Thank you. I should. Well, I have no idea where to find Elisa right now, or I should probably head back to Elysium, see what's happening. Uh, I couldn't, can barely Good hear luck. your face. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> and she nods her head and starts heading out. And you see that, Yanina, that okay. Rahela is leaving as well as uh, and heading upstairs. Raquel leaves. I'm going to go towards the... I'm blissfully unaware at first. I think yeah. I'm just kind of staring into the middle distance thinking on this. So I, I no, on it's... that box, you don't see any at yeah. all. Um, <laughs> Rahela notices you as you pass her on the stairs and she kind of nods her head and gives you a smile, okay. Yanina, but she seems very focused and uh, I know in her head about something. Can I come up to Bear? Hey. Oh, hello. Oh, I'm sorry, I saw you talking with Raquel. I didn't want to like impose, but... I, I, Dominic's missing. He, he left. That's what Diana told me, that he just went out and never returned. And Lucian is looking for him, and I'm so worried. I, I wanted to ask you if you would be able to, I don't know, use your gifts to see what's going on. Let's be so private. Yes, of course. Private. Um, it's before we start having in-depth conversations in the lobby. <laughs> um, right. Um, I think, which would be closer, like the offices behind Elysium or our rooms? It's a similar distance. You have to pass through Elysium to get to the offices. Um, I guess to our rooms then, because yeah, then I'll be in Elysium and I shouldn't be using abilities there. Yes. Okay. Head back to the rooms. <laughs> You head back to one of your rooms. Mm -hmm. um, right, so let me get this straight. Dominic is missing. Yes. Um, and he hasn't been doing very well lately. He's been worried and not feeling like he fits in after he got back. And I think he's the change that he went through there was starting to wear off. And I think that also made him unhappy. As you're talking, I'm flicking through my journal, trying to refresh memories of what was going on with Dominique, because I'm getting a strange feeling of deja vu. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I can't quite place it. Um, uh, so I don't know, I worry that he might have do something stupid and, I don't know, try to get back to the Sabbat. I don't know, I hope not. I hope he just went out to clear his head. I'm so worried. Okay. Oh. Once again, I would like to focus on Dominic. I focus on the words on the pages about him, about him being a dancer, about about him having been to the Tsumitsi's house previously. And I ask you, Nina, to, to give me descriptions as to what he's like as a person as well, and just to sort of refresh my memory. And I'd like to activate, um, oh my God, the same thing I've been using. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Eyes of chaos. <laughs> Perception and occult. Yeah. Uh, difficulty nine because you're not super close to him. That's you're not fair. that familiar with him. Fair, because this seems important. I would like to spend a point of willpower on it. Of course. With the willpower, that is two successes. So you focus on the description that Yanina is giving you of Dominic and try to imagine him from that close your eyes briefly. And as you're trying to imagine him, his form, his personality, the way he thinks, what he went through, what he was going through, how he was, suddenly you get the sense of something wrapped around him 
pulling at him, pulling him apart. And you smell blood filling your nostrils and it smells terrifying and so sweet and so appealing as it scares you. Um, and you feel the pull somewhere away, something almost tearing him apart as it pulls and pulls and pulls uh, so strong that he can't resist. And as I sort of sit there, I, I sit there for longer with my eyes closed. Um, and as I was, as I'd been looking through my notes previously, I'd been glancing through the descriptions of what happened last time. And I'm wondering whether I should tell you, Nina. Um. And so I decide on a compromise, but I'm not okay. going to straight up lie to her, but I will turn to her and say, I think we need to find one of the hounds, the sheriff's people. Okay. Can you reach Anthony and ask him? He's probably a bit busy, but if there's someone else available, then I'm sure they can pass it on to him. Uh, uh, before that, they are all your self-control and subterfuge and because you are i'm keeping some empathy, details and um, you need all your perception and empathy then i, I already closed all my, <laughs> all my we, we will finish soon but okay, just to uh, play that to the sorry, end what did you, what did you fix uh, and what sorry perception wait. and empathy okay sorry i'm just sleepy <laughs> Okay, two successes. Successes. So you don't see anything bad. Just tells you you need to find one of the hounds. I trust her. She never lied to me before. Um, so I guess get up and start heading towards Elysium. And I think with that, we can finish for tonight. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you to <laughs> everyone who's been watching. We really appreciate you being here with us after the Christmas break to continue the story of our Warsaw Kindred. Um, we will be back um, in two weeks. So on the 30th of January, uh, same time, uh, 6.30 p.m. GMT. And we hope you will join us again in two weeks to see what happens next with the meaning of ink missing. Um, <laughs> yes, thank you so much and good night. Good night. Bye bye. Poor Dominic. <laughs>